ever to make the world green and clean. No insects, no crop, no human. Insects ever <laughs> dominate. <laughs> no, no, no. Dominate our planet. मुझे अभी लास्ट मोमेंट ज्यादा कल वेलकम तुमने कर दिया ये सब कुछ ये तो नॉर्मल नॉर्मल है वेलकम है मुझे अभी बहुत ये हो रहा है ना ये सर का फॉलो करो इन्वेकेशन सब हो गया सुभाष सर से बोल रहे हैं तो सुभाष सर फिर सुभाष सर के आ गए आई एम वेलकमिंग द गेस्ट ऑफ आवर मैं वेलकम द गेस्ट ड्रिंक एंड टुडे इज आवर चीफ गेस्ट डॉक्टर वाई जी कृष्ण ऐसे मैं बोल दूंगी कि सर आएंगे अपना बोलेंगे सर को मैं बोलूंगी इट्स गिव्स इट गिव्स मी इमेंस प्लेजर टू इनवाइट डॉक्टर सुभाष चंद्र सर टू वेलकम द गैदरिंग एंड इंट्रोड्यूस टुडे इज चीफ गेस्ट डॉक्टर वाई जी कृष्ण डायरेक्टर सी आई सी आर नाम हां ठीक है हो गया अब सर 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 आएंगे आएंगे बोलेंगे कुछ पूछना अपने गेस्ट के बारे से बताएंगे गेस्ट वो वो वेलकम वेलकम में वहां के वहां ही देते हैं सुबह जब करते हैं ना तब हम बुके देते हैं तब मैं बच्चे को मुझे तो बस ठीक है ठीक है मैम अभी मुझे फोकस करने दो है ना टाइम में दे दिए नमस्कार नमस्कार अभी कुछ नहीं अभी कुछ नहीं अभी कुछ नहीं इंसेक्ट्स
Insects, the little wonders that lights the world ever to make the worlds green and green. No insect, no crops, no human. Respected dignitaries, ESI awardees, entomologists, and fraternity across the India. Respected dignitaries, ESI awardees, entomologists, and fraternity across the India, I, Dr. Arshna Anoke, scientist, Division of Entomology, welcomes you all on behalf of Entomological Society of India on this auspicious occasion of ESI award ceremony and first Entomological Society of India annual lecture. It's my pleasure to welcome the dignitaries to the dais. Today's our guest of honor, Dr. Y.G. Prashad, Director, ICR, Central Institute of Cotton Research, Nagpur. I welcome you, sir, on the dais. Welcome, sir. I feel privileged to invite Dr. Subhas Chinder, sir, Director, NCIPM, to the dais. Welcome, sir. It gives me immense pleasure to invite Dr. S. Subramanian, Principal Scientist, Division of Entomology, IRI, New Delhi, to the dais. Welcome you all, sir. I request Dr. Subhash Chandra, sir, to welcome our guest of honor with the bouquet of flower. Welcome, sir. I request Dr. Subramaniam, sir, to welcome our Subhash Chandra, sir, with the bouquet of flower. I request Dr. Sachin Suresi, sir, to welcome Dr. Subramaniam, sir. Thank you, sir. Welcome you all on the today's occasion. I also welcome to our dignitaries and audience who has been connected through the online mode. Now, I would like to invite Ashwarya and team for the invocation song. Gananayakaya, Ganadaivataya, Ganadyakshaya, Dhimahi, 
ಗುಣಶರೀರಾಯ ಗುಣಮಂಡಿತಾಯ ಗುಣೇಶಾನಾಯ ಧೀಮಹಿ ಗುಣಾಧೀತಾಯ ಗುಣಾಧೀಶಾಯ ಗುಣ ಪ್ರವಿಷ್ಟಾಯ ಧೀಮಹಿ ಏಕದಂತಾಯ ವಕ್ರತುಂಡಾಯ ಗೌರೀತನಯಾಯ ಧೀಮಹಿ ಗಜೇಶಾನಾಯ ಬಾಲಚಂದ್ರಾಯ ಶ್ರೀ ಗಣೇಶಾಯ ಧೀಮಹಿ ಏಕದಂತಾಯ ವಕ್ರತುಂಡಾಯ ಗೌರೀತನಯಾಯ ಧೀಮಹಿ ಗಜೇಶಾನಾಯ ಬಾಲಚಂದ್ರಾಯ ಶ್ರೀ ಗಣೇಶಾಯ ಧೀಮಹಿ ಗಾಣ ಚತುರಾಯ ಗಾಣ ಪ್ರಾಣಾಯ ಗಾನಾಂತರಾತ್ಮನೆ ಗಾನೋತ್ಸುಕಾಯ ಗಾನ ಮತ್ತಾಯ ಗಾನೋತ್ಸುಕ ಮನಸೆ ಗುರು ಪೂಜಿತಾಯ ಗುರು ದೈವತಾಯ ಗುರುಕುಲಸ್ಥಾಯಿನೆ ಗುರು ವಿಕ್ರಮಾಯ ಗುಹ್ಯ ಪ್ರವರಾಯ ಗುರವೇ ಗುಣ ಗುರವೇ ಗುರು ದೈತ್ಯ ಕಲ ಕ್ಷೇತ್ರೆ ಗುರು ಧರ್ಮ ಸದಾರಾಧ್ಯಾಯ ಗುರು ಪುತ್ರ ಪರಿತ್ರಾತ್ರೆ ಗುರು ಪಾಖಂಡ ಖಂಡಕಾಯ ಗೀತ ಸಾರಾಯ ಗೀತ ತತ್ವಾಯ ಗೀತ ಗೋತ್ರಾಯ ಧೀಮಹಿ ಗೂಳ ಗುಲ್ಪಾಯ ಗಂಧ ಮತ್ತಾಯ ಗೋಜಯ ಪ್ರದಾಯ ಧೀಮಹಿ ಗುಣಾತೀತಾಯ ಗುಣಾಧೀಶಾಯ ಗುಣ ಪ್ರವಿಷ್ಟಾಯ ಧೀಮಹಿ ಏಕದಂತಾಯ ವಕ್ರತುಂಡಾಯ ಗೌರೀತನಯಾಯ ಧೀಮಹಿ ಗಜೇಶಾನಾಯ ಬಾಲಚಂದ್ರಾಯ ಶ್ರೀ ಗಣೇಶಾಯ ಧೀಮಹಿ ಏಕದಂತಾಯ ವಕ್ರತುಂಡಾಯ ಗೌರೀತನಯಾಯ ಧೀಮಹಿ ಗಜೇಶಾನಾಯ ಬಾಲಚಂದ್ರಾಯ ಶ್ರೀ ಗಣೇಶಾಯ ಧೀಮಹಿ Thank you, Aishwarya and team for the beautiful song. The Entomological Society of India was founded in 1938 and it is one of the largest professional society in India serving entomologists and researchers in related discipline. The society is publishing Indian Journal of Entomology since nine decades. As per the recommendation of Executive Committee, the Entomological Society of India has introduced ESI Young Scientist Award in the 2020 and the society has introduced ESI Senior Scientist Award and ESI Best PhD Thesis Award from 2021 onwards. Accordingly, every year, three young entomologists, two senior entomologists and Best PhD Thesis will be awarded to encourage, recognize and promote the outstanding contribution of the entomologist in the country. With this, I would like to request Dr. Subhash Chandra sir to welcome the gathering and introduce today's guest of honor. Welcome, sir. Thank you, Archana. Very good morning to every one of you this fine day. Our guest of honor, Dr. Baiji Prasad, Director, ICR Central Institute of Cotton Research, Nagpur, and my old friend. We were together in IRI. There was one year difference. He was one year after me, and we spent good five, six years. So I am very, very happy to welcome you, sir. Very distinguished scientist. Dr. Subramaniam. Principal Scientist, Division of Entomology, and very distinguished scientist and convener of uh, today's function. All the dignitaries, galaxy of entomologists were present here. All the members of previous executive, current executive, all the life members, scientists, faculty, students, ladies and gentlemen. It is uh, my proud privilege to welcome you all today on the occasion of this ESI annual workshop 2022. 
which is marked by two very important events Antimicrobial Society of India Awards 2021. So, their award is they will be making their presentations. And first, Antimicrobial Society of India annual lecture 22. Uh, 2022, which has been uh, for which uh, Dr. Chandish Balal, she has been nominated, and I congratulate her for her nomination for this. As you know, our ESI has grown quite old. It is 84 years old now. So, octogenarian, we can call. So, very, very experienced. And it has very well fulfilled its uh, mission of disseminate, disseminating entomological knowledge. Uh, also provided platform for conducting meetings, discussions, seminars, and also have been publishing very important publication, Indian Journal of Entomology, Bulletin of Entomology, and also in, in Recently, we have also initiated some other publications which are serving the community and therefore doing service for the country. So during all these years, very, very renowned personalities, they have been associated with our society and uh, we have been are fortunate to have their, uh, you know, guidance and advice. So today also, I feel privileged in heartily welcoming a galaxy of eminent entomologists who have made our community pride, brought pride to our community by excelling in their professional careers and achieving, you know, highest echelons of uh, professional leadership as vice chancellors of state agriculture universities, central agriculture universities and also Deputy Director General, Directors of ICR Institutes. So really, sir, you have done entomologist pride, and uh, we are very, very, very happy to have you all of you here. So therefore, I welcome Dr. Baiji Prasad, Director CICR, and Guest of Honor for the function. Dr. S. N. Puri, immediate past President and of Science of India for 18 long years. Sir, you have done very, very, you know, committed job to the society and for its betterment. And former Vice Chancellor, Central Agriculture University Impal for two terms. Sir, we welcome you. I also welcome Dr. B.B. Patel, former Vice President and former Vice Chancellor, University of Agriculture Sciences, Raichu, sir. Welcome, sir. I also welcome Dr. Chandis Balal, former Vice President and uh, former Director, NVIR, and today's distinguished speaker. And I also congratulate Madam you are also then for you. Dr. B.B. Ramamurthy, President, Entrepreneur Society of India, and former Chief Editor for eight long years. Sir, you have done a remarkable job for the betterment of the journal for regularizing it and so we thank you and welcome you sir dr k s kokar i think he couldn't come former vice president and former vc chaudhary chand singh haryana agriculture university he saw we also welcome him dr j p singh former general secretary antimal society of india and retired principal scientist. Other members of uh, former executive, Dr. M. Premjit Singh, former vice president and former VC CAU in four. He couldn't join. Actually, last month, uh, last week, I met him in Lucknow. So he has gone to Bangkok. So he has sent all his good wishes for this meeting. Dr. N. K. Krishan Kumar, former vice president, and DDG Horticulture, ICR. He is also busy. So we also, we also welcome him. Dr. T.P. Rajendran, former ADG. Sir, we welcome you. Dr. Jagdish Bentor, uh, he was head plant protection and also 
PI for Entomological at uh, Indian Institute of Rice Research. We also welcome him online, Dr. K. L. Srivastava, retired principal scientist, entomology, Dr. T. M. Manju Nath, so very distinguished entomologist. We also, Dr. Ram Singh, we also welcome you, sir, He's a very distinguished scientist from HEO. Dr. Sushil Kumar Saxena, Dr. S. M. Sushil, Dr. R. K. Anand, also welcome you, sir. I also welcome other uh, members of former executive, Dr. H. K. Singh, Dr. Sachin Suroshe, who were former counselors, and Dr. Anna Meshram, our treasurer. So he has been transferred now from here. And all the members of newly elected executive, I also welcome them. Especially, I welcome the awardees and heartily congratulate them for splendid achievement. Achieving among senior entomologist awardee, Dr. Ankita Gupta, she is there online. Dr. Mukesh Kumar Dhillon, Principal Scientist, Division Entomology. Among young scientists awardee, Dr. Amalendu Ghosh, Dr. Guru Prasanna Pandi, Dr. K. Silvaraj, Dr. P. R. Shashank. In fact, two of them are my students, Dr. Guru Prasanna Pandi and Dr. K. Silvaraj. They have been my students in PhD. And best PhD thesis awardee, Dr. V. Kary Karyana. So, heartiest congratulations to all, all, uh, all of you. I also welcome other project directors, heads, professors, students, and other attendees from various institutions who have joined online or offline. So, sir, I want to mention here that this institution of these various awards and annual under this annual lecture, they are very good initiatives taken by the Indian Society of India, and they will go a long way in encouraging our researchers and scientists to undertake innovative and competitive research. Because this time is of problems, so everyone is talking of innovations. Something new should be done in your research. Problem solving research. A lot of problems are there in the area of plant protection. So something with this, we should come out, our students, our researchers should come out something new, new ideas, problem solving research. So for that, I think it, they, these awards uh, will prove very, very fruitful. And uh, I can say one more thing that uh, entomological science is a very good, means a lot of applications in crop protection and uh, in agriculture, but we can still value add to our research to adoption of various techniques and technologies, which are offered by molecular techniques, geospatial techniques, computational sciences. So we should all absorb them and bring, add value to our entomological research. So I think that will give, go a long way in uh, putting this entomology on higher pedestal among the agricultural sciences. So with these words, I finally welcome each and everyone who are present here and others who have joined online, whose name I might have missed. And I wish and hope that deliberations will be scientifically very, very fruitful and uh, very good. Uh, for the our especially for the new students so i have also been assigned the job of introducing our uh, you know distinguished speaker today dr baiji prasad and uh, dr baiji prasad no he did his bsc agriculture in 1981 from baptla agriculture college and uh, did MSc under the chairmanship of Dr. Y.S. Singh during 86 to 88 at IARI, as I founded also PhD under Dr. Ramakrishnan, at the time doing on genomic characterization of Spodoptera litura nuclear polyhydrosis virus. And uh, during his work, he worked on effective strains of BT. Nomuria relay and Achaea genata granulosis virus at Directorate of Oil Seed Research. 
Hyderabad, and this technology was commercialized to 48 private firms. And the YSA protocols he developed for this insect, they were adopted by CIVRC. So very, very important research he did that time at uh, Directorate of Wild Seed Research. After that, he shifted to CRIDA as a senior scientist. And at CRIDA, he led multi-institutional consortium projects funded by World Bank, NATP, on weather-based pest forewarning in six crops and NAIP project on development of decision support systems for IPM. And uh, also developed and hosted model-based crop pest decision support system. He also developed the wireless sensor-based IoT application that time for pest and disease prediction in groundnut in collaboration with CDSE Hyderabad. He was consultant for uh, WWF India for former participatory technology development project on sustainable cotton initiative in 50 villages of Telangana for six years. And uh, support provided for this project eventually led to the launch of Better Cotton Initiative in India. At Krita, he also coordinated two mega initiatives. Apart from his uh, professional entomological research, coordinated countrywide efforts on preparation of district level agriculture contingency plans for 580 districts to meet aberrant monsoon weather situations as convener. Also coordinated the technology demonstration component of NICRA project operated through 121 KVKs across the country before uh, he became director of Atari, I think, yeah. And commensurate to this work, very, very deservingly, he's a re recipient of Netherlands government NU FIC International Scholarship and trained in plant biosafety at IESC, Wageningen, and also attended training on pest modeling for outdoor crops at HRI Warwick, UK. He was also awarded the Dr. Bob Reddy Memorial Award 2012 for IPM by Plant Production Association of India. And he, he is a valuable partner in achieving the Golden Globe Award for Crop SAP project by Ministry of Information Technology, Government of India, which is also being implemented at NCIPM also. We are also partnering in that. He is a member of National Advisory Committee on Climate Smart Agriculture, study by TIFAC DST, and chairman of PRSG on Annapurna Krishi Prasar Seva, which is an interactive ICT interface for scientists and farmers, piloted by the Digital India Corporation, Ministry of IT. Currently, he is a PRSG member for digital solutions for empowering farmers in Northeast. So what we are talking of now, digital sciences is here. Very early he has started this work. So you can see his foresight and uh, you know need, need of the day, what we needed. He served as director ICR Atari at Hyderabad, uh, at Krita itself, I think it is, uh, was there in, since 2015 and coordinating 71 KVKs in the states of AP, Telangana, Tamil Nadu, Puducherry, and also initiated first on-farm trials through 19 KVKs on assessment of IPM modules for new invasive fall army worm on maize during 2018, and also established 10 KVKs under his jurisdiction in four states under the chairmanship of Dr. S. N. Puri. He also visited uh, abroad and uh, presented his uh, research contributions in international conferences in Netherlands, Malaysia, UK, France, Brazil, Indonesia, and Egypt. And he is a member of many, many professional societies and has to his credit 158 national and international publications. Currently, providing leadership in quarter research and development as director CICR Nagpur since 20. 
2020 so very important institute and cotton is a very important crop so sir we you know wish and hope that we'll get uh, you know under your leadership able leadership of sustainable solutions to our pest problems and our economy will uh, you know get uh, enhanced and uh, uh, we look for your uh, uh, advice and you know uh, leadership and uh, you will act as an inspiration for our young scientists and entomologists. So with all this, thank you very much for giving me this opportunity. Thank you, sir. With this, I would like to invite Dr. Timanna and team for playing ESI documentary. Dr. Timanna and team for playing ESI documentary. For 17th century, Indian researchers were not getting proper recognition and serious attention for their discoveries and investigations in the field of entomology. Then, the first paper of entomology in India, that is, when his article on termites published in the research activities of Berlin Society of the Friends of Nature. It amazed the researchers of insect science, which elegantly matched the present understanding of the mice and the British government appointed the NLD Nice Villain as a post entomologist. This Holland, wherein he mentioned the existence of Institution of Civil Engineers, Chemical Society, British Science Association, and highlighted the advantage of having one entomology society for the whole India. He quoted, I do not know, however, to what extent the formation of an entomological society would meet the wishes and requirements of an entomologist in India. No, I must confess, do I quite see what would be the function of my social society? My scheme for centralization of entomological work in India eventually. Such a central institute and service would full. Generally, to other workers. Even as it is, our periodical meetings provide ample of opportunity for discussion of any problem, and it is difficult to see how more frequent or better attended meetings could be arranged in such a vast country as India. Nor is there any lack at present of facilities for publication. This tradition, mooted by Plachier, hibernated for 18 long years. But the aspiration thought of T.V. Plachev was again re-emerged during the 24th Indian Science Congress held in Hyderabad in 1937. The formation of Society for Indian Entomologists was done by forming an ad hoc committee consisting of Muhammad Abdul Hussain, Hamsim Kutli, T.V. Ramakrishna Ayer, Y. Ramachandra Rao, 
and the chatterjee devraj mehta and durga das mukherjee to formulate rules and regulations for the show on 7 january 1938 at the indian science conversation in calcutta sri ramakrishna ayer moved a resolution that the society for indian entomology named as the entomological society of india and the draft rules developed by the ad hoc committee was accepted unanimously Entomological Society of India was formally launched by Abdul Hussain, an eminent local entomologist in India, and the principal of the Punjab Agricultural College, Mumbai. In the context of the just inaugurated Entomological Society of India, the founder president Abdul Hussain said, "It is most necessary for the future development of our science that a powerful independent body of scientific opinion be created to foster the growth of entomology in our country." an entomological society with branches all over the country is greatly needed and at the time of inauguration in 1938 the entomological society of india enrolled 42 full members and one associate member in 1938 ad hoc committee determined the society's objective what the first may not be knowing the curious story behind the selection of leaf insect as a society logo in 1935 a person called william wilson saunders exhibited male and female of life william tissu volume collected from india at a meeting of the entomological society of london the curious morphology and its endemicity to the indian sub continent attracted the entomological society of india of its bearers in 1938 to select the insect the branches of entomological society of india were established to reach out and coordinate entomological researchers from different parts of the country new delhi sindh punjab and coimbatore as the year passes branches were changed to chapters at coimbatore madurai umiyam akola parwani and lucknow During those days, the Honorable President of India were praised for safety rules in safeguarding food security and public health. The establishment of entomological society was over, but the next challenge was publication. The Founder President Muhammad Abdul Hussain emphasized the necessity of publication for entomology research. The editorial board comprising Dr. Sruti, T. V. Ramakrishna Iyer, N. C. Chatterjee, D. R. Mehta. Han A Rahman Krishna Bihari Lal was constituted Kuti was the chief editor the first issue of Indian Journal of Entomology rolled out of the press in June 1939 Entomological Society of India organizes various international and national conferences symposia workshops meetings to promote the entomological research of the India and the world There were renowned entomologists who served as the president of Entomological Society of India The Entomological Society of India has seen phenomenal growth in recent years under the stewardship of Dr. V. V. Ramamurthy and partnership of Dr. S. N. Puri as the president of Entomological Society of India from 2004. Currently, annual membership of Entomological Society of India reached more than 2,500 with 626 life fellows. Entomological Society of India also publishes other publications like Memoirs of Entomology, Bionote, Bulletins of Entomology, and Indian Entomologist Day. However, the changing time required adoption and improvement in communicating insect science to the people. Entomological Society of India has been modernized to reach researchers by moving to open access from 2020, which enables easy accessibility. To encourage and promote entomological research in India, Entomological Society of India has launched Entomological Society Awards for scientists and best PhD thesis started from 2020 by recognizing their outstanding work in the field of entomology. Thank you Dr. Thimanna
Hemant and team for a wonderful compilation. It is very relevant to this context that it is a man who want to create a history, should know the history. So thank you for tracing the entomology history. With this, I feel privileged to invite dignitaries of the dias for releasing the ESI souvenir on these occasions. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Now, I would like to invite today's guest of honor, Dr. Vaiji Prashad, sir, for introductory remarks and preside over the sessions. Yeah. All the dignitaries here, all the online participants, a good morning to all of you. Dr. S. N. Puri, former president of the society, Dr. V. V. Ramurthy, current president, Dr. B. V. Patel, uh, former vice president and uh, former vice chancellor, Dr. Subhash Chandra, director in CAPM, Dr. Subramanian from the DAS. Dr. Chandish Ballal, former director NBIR, Dr. S.N. Sushil, who has joined online, Dr. R.K. RK Anand, sir, Dr. Renu Srivast, sir, Dr. Manjunath, sir, who has joined online, Dr. T.P. Rajendran, Dr. J.P. Singh, Dr. K.L. Srivastava, who has joined from Malaysia online. I am seeing him after a long time. Dr. J.S. Bentur, Dr. Ram Singh, sir, <coughs> all the executive members, former and current executive members of the society, all awardees, all professors, teachers, students of the division, and all entomologists and members of ESI who are participating in this physically as well as online. Uh, good morning to everyone and a warm welcome to you for this ESI awards and annual workshop. It is a great privilege for me to be here after so many years, uh, a student of IRI to be amongst you standing before you and then participating as a guest of honor in this. Thank you for the society for uh, inviting me. It's a great privilege and honor, and I'm very happy to be here amongst you and uh, uh, take part in this award ceremony. I have not much to say at this point of time. I just would like to invite uh, the presenters later on when before or after the award ceremony, maybe I'll have some scope for as per the schedule I'll follow. So. Should I invite now? We have about, uh, we'll have the presentations now. So we have uh, two plus four plus one, seven presentations. So first presentation, Dr. Ankita Gupta, I think she has joined online. Yes, Are you sir. ready, Dr. Ankita? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So she is ready. And then uh, as a, she is the senior science entomologist awardee. I now invite Dr. Ankita Gupta to be followed by Dr. Mukesh. Then we'll have the young scientist uh, awardees, young entomologist awardees, Dr. Amalendu Ghosh, Dr. Guru Prasanna, Dr. K. Selvaraj, who is here, Dr. Shashank also here, and also the PhD thesis, best, of, best PhD thesis awardee, Dr. Karyana. All these presentations, we'll have uh, the pleasure of listening to them. And, uh, and uh, there, thereafter, I think we'll have the award ceremony. Thank you very much. I invite Dr. Ankita to make a presentation. Yeah, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. So shall I share my screen?
Yes, ma'am. Please let me know if uh, the screen is fully visible. Yes, yes, ma'am, it is visible. Yeah, uh, a very good morning. Uh, uh, warm greetings uh, to all the audience, respected audience there uh, at IARA, as well as uh, the offline uh, online audience. I remain, I remain humbled and grateful uh, for, to the Entomological Society of India to consider me wise enough for this uh, award. So with this, I would like to first start my presentation with an apology that because of my personal commitment to attend a, a cancer patient at my home, I could not physically come. However, I'll try my best to communicate my uh, whatever work I have done. So I would be sharing in brief the journey uh, with, my paras with the parasitic wasps and the light taxa, which I have been working. Basically, I work on taxonomy of uh, uh, parasitoids. And uh, initially, when I started, I joined uh, as a permanent employee at PDBC. I started working on preconids, and I took microgastrini as one of the subfamily to work. And the first and foremost thing which I did was to estimate the species diversity as to how much I have to, I have to, or what is remain undocumented should be known. So I took the model concept from the Neoarctic region and the Neotropical region, which says which says that the uh, the, the north normal lepidoptera to the microgastrine or the parasitoid ratio of a well diversity documented region should be somewhere in and around uh, in between 7 to 20 with an average of 12. So with this, if we calculate, we come to know that uh, just uh, when I made the checklist, only one fourth of the uh, species which is supposed to be known was known. So I moved ahead and I started my surveys and I continued uh, surveying systematically on a majority of the country areas I have covered. And uh, during this uh, 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 process, I have described around 65 new species. Some of them are non-Indian species also. First report of 227 new host records and revisionary studies of four texts I have done, one family, which is Vespidae, one subfamily, Microgastrini, and two species group of Braconidae from the Oriental region. Global review I have done for two taxa, uh, for two genera, and species nomenclature changes I have given with 10 synonymies, uh, three new combinations, and one species status revised. Indian checklist we have made for Vespidae. There was no Indian checklist for Braconidae and Vespidae, so updated Indian checklist has been made. I have added some 1,200 uh, authentic identified species to the collections uh, with around 20k identified specimens. Many more specimens are there with me in thousands, which I have I have to yet to identify. I have been continuously providing identification services and have published 126 peer reviewed research papers. So my mode of collection has been passive as well as active. So I have used different traps, um, lice traps and uh, yellow pen traps and as well as sweep nets. But however, I have been focusing more on host rearing which has been a major ma mainstay in my uh, group. So uh, for this, uh, I have initiated a transcontinental approach for studying Braconidae, in which we have uh, we are a team of uh, collaborators across the globe on different different taxa and we have started our work just to start with the first work which I did for the phylogeny of one particular I wanted to in do the integrated taxonomy of a highly species group uh, Glyptopentelis in which I had brought the first concept of clade limited host utilization pattern and uh, this led to the discovery of uh, eight species groups with 26 provisional new species which I am in the process of describing this was done with team NBIR with Dr. Wink and group. And uh, uh, after that, uh, side by side, I have been studying fauna from different parts of the globe. This was Afrotropical fauna, uh, which was uh, from the Reunion Island, which uh, has one of the most active volcanoes uh, on the earth. And this island is, uh, is, is, is a hot spot for many of the naturalists to work on. So we have worked on the fauna of this place and given a catalog and 18 new taxa and a key to species. Then I have collaborated with Chinese workers and we recently have uh, worked, uh, uh, done the revision for two groups. A majority of the species are Chinese and Indian, uh, at a group of uh, Appentelis with synonymies and uh, 
almost like 97 species we have treated. For this particular work, I have examined 17 species type at Natural History Museum. I have done the redescription of 11 species. And now we can say which species are present uh, in China as well as India together. And this is the first ever comprehensive study which has been done for any of the Appenteles group from Oriental region. The second one is uh, Altor group of Dolichogenidia in which we have treated 67 species. I have examined all the types at NHM and we have uh, a redescribed few species and I have given you host records. Then along with uh, other workers, uh, we have worked on uh, the review, review of Cortesia. Here, uh, one particular uh, uh, subspecies, or we can we, we cannot say it's a subspecies, but there was a conflict in the major character. So th that character, that is a meteotergite, which tapers at the apex. I'll not go more into the taxonomic details. So that has been present only in Africa as well as uh, India. So we have examined some 269 species, and uh, we have uh, done the uh, parasitoid host wherever it was available the analysis and based on this we have come to the conclusion that uh, the molecular data of all the species including the cryptic species which we were talking about they support the monophyly of the genus Cortesia. Then uh, with the international students which I have got from Iran uh, we have worked on the paleatric fauna and six new species with re review of three ge genera I have done from paleatric region. So uh, Again, with team NBIR, Dr. Venkateshan, we have worked on the host uh, range, which is redefining boundaries for Snellius and Microplatus, which are the two genera which uh, now possibly with uh, international collaboration, we are in the process of synonymizing them. Secondly, uh, under the CABI project, uh, we have uh, dealt with the with the hyperparasitoids of the bicontrol agents of the invasive weeds, Hedishim and Rubus, and I have described a new species from the Himalayan region. So then uh, majority of my discoveries have been from the butterflies where major the Hesperids have been the most predominant uh, host and uh, Briconids the most predominant parasitoids. And you, as you can see in Hesperids, 27 host species has yielded 31 species. Many of them are new in this. And this is one of the glimpses I'm giving for I'm not going in too much into details because of time uh, constraint. Then uh, similarly for nymphalids, seven host species has yielded me six species of wasps, lichenids. I have reared up to 16 species, uh, which has given me nine species of wasps as well as tachinids. Same is the case for uh, pirates. So now I can very confidently say that which particular genus has which kind of host range and what is the, what is the, uh, uh, exclusive host for some particular genus that also we have uh, published it. So with this, uh an exclusive solitary and gregarious species and the cocoon pattern formation specific to a species also has been published. So this is the category which I have uh, demarked as reared. And so in this all together in this work, uh, comprehensive work, I have gone into 200 morpho species, which I read from 77, 75 host species belonging to 22 families. During all this process, we have got many new family host records which global records, which for the first time host association, including the rare uh, family of uh, butterfly Riodinidae, which yielded us uh, parasitoid for the first time. So likewise, for many group of uh, pests, we have uh, documented all the parasitoids, egg larval and pupil, as well as for many of the arthropods, as you can see, some of them has yielded us new species, be it a hemipteran or a coleopteran. Many of them are a new uh, global records also. So uh, uh, some of the very interesting case of ectoparasitism and endoparasitism, new species uh, clearly demarked as ectoparasitoids and endoparasitoids have been uh, published during this process. And this particular work was done along with Dr. Selvaraj, who has given me the specimens of white fly from one region. And we got, uh, we reported for the first time a family Zinesti, a rare family from the Indian mainland. And for the first time globally, any uh, parasitoid of Zinesti was reported from the world. So we reported this. Then uh, likewise for all the predators also, even from the nest, I have documented majority. Now I'm going to come up with a publication with all the parasitoids of the predators from their native uh, nest there, where they're housing. And we have documented uh, many of the uh, parasitoids from Dr. the- Ankita. Yes, sir. Yes, one sir. More, I... one, more, one more minute. Sir. Okay. One more minute. Okay. 
Sure, sir. Sure, sir. So uh, I'll just skip the this particular part. I'll go to this uh, Kasava Milibak. In this uh, recently one work, what we have done, uh, the team NBIR as well as with Dr. Shashank and all, we have taken the help in which we have read multiple uh, predators which are present and we have separated the predators and we have gone to the parasitoids even up to the four trophic level and documented up to 45 species of uh, arthropods which are present in CMB niche. Now at present, we are working on the parallel gill dynamics and the interspecific competition between the predators in the CMB niche. So during this, I have uh, reported many of the invasive uh, 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 pests, their parasitoid complex. The For the first time, I have initiated larval taxonomy after 108 years of its, and I have given new characters. And for this, uh, the rearing was done up to three, two, three, two, 235 days for Excalifus dicax. And the conclusion of this is the species which is present in India is dicax. Which had a uh, which had a confusion with the species Festivus, which is present in Africa, Middle East, and this thing. So uh, I just come to the end of my presentation. Uh, during this, I have been in. Uh, I attended a modern taxonomy program, which has given me a lot of insight. And the, for this, I got the edit grant and DSD travel grant. I have been uh, to uh, um, a natural history museum where I have examined many, many specimens. Nine databases have been prepared, which are hosted in NBIR uh, websites. Three technologies we have commercialized. This is with under the guidance of Dr. Subharan. We uh, together as a team for three species for Musca domestica management in poultry we have done. And this is the expert system what I have developed for the now at present, we are getting many international students in the museum for, uh, for training under parasitic droids. So this is uh, the last I, I owe this award. Uh, very much I'm thankful to the Entomological Society of India, ICR, most importantly, Network Project on Insect Biosystematics, who has groomed me to whom I am today, Dr. Ramamurthy, sir, who has ever been supportive. There was an incident when, in, when I wanted a camera and I just went and, sir, within a span of five days, the money from NPIB project has come and I could purchase the camera. Dr. Balal has been very instrumental uh, I owe a lot to her because she was instrumental in my NHM trip. Otherwise, it would have been not possible. Dr. Purni to uh, share all the lab facilities with me. And definitely, I have learned everything of taxonomy, what I know today through her uh, publications and the way she approaches her work, all the contributors and uh, of the international contributors and the sponsors, Serb, INSA, CABI, CRAD France, NHM, Iran and Nepal Ministry and International Society of Hymenopterists who have been supporting us. The only thing what I have gained, I feel as of now till in the journey is that one genus was named on me by the CNC group, which I consider it as my privilege and a uh, great oh, privilege. And and one species from University of Illinois. This I would like to end my presentation. Thank you, one and all. Uh, thank you, Dr. Ankita. Very nice presentation. Thank and, you. And uh, congratulations to, to you on you, uh, being awarded this uh, prestigious ESA award of, for senior entomologist. Thank you. Once sir. again, congratulations and thank, thank you. you be, be online. Thank you, sir. Thank you. We'll have the next uh, presentation by Dr. Mukesh Kumar Dillon. Uh, Dr. Dillon, please, 10 minutes time. 15 minutes, as allotted, but I'll try to finish in yeah. 10 minutes. Yeah. You can have some discussion <coughs> because you have difficulty. Yeah. Uh, good morning, uh, family entomology, including the senior veterans and uh, dear friends. Uh, first of all, uh, I would like to thank Entomological Society of India for recognizing uh, the research contributions uh, uh, through this uh, Senior Entomologist Award. Straightway, I'll be going for the presentations to save time. Uh, can I have the control on the presentation? This front? No, it's not moving. No. Oh, okay. Okay. Next one. Pick. Okay. My presentation will uh, be in four different uh, uh, components. The first component uh, will be on. Yes. Next. 
first component will be uh, on to understanding the CMS systems and how these CMS systems can be used for uh, insect resistance. And here we are, to, uh, I will be talking about uh, uh, sorghum suit fly as a case study. In the second one, insect diapause. And in that, uh, the chylopertilus will be one of the case study. And uh, uh, in, in all these things, uh, uh, because these were some of the important uh, components which we need to understand to uh, have a better strategies for the pest management. And uh, in the third, how these uh, BT crops in the pest management and what are their non-target effects on the, the non-target organisms, and also host plant resistance, inter insect plant interactions and other things next. Going for the first one, next. Going for the first one, uh, uh, CMS systems and their uh, role in host plant resistance as a case study. So this study uh, was uh, 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 conducted and uh, there are several such publications can have come out of it. And the questions we asked about uh, what are the mechanisms, what are the inheritance of resistance and whether these CMS systems have any role or in the uh, resistance or susceptibility of this pest. And uh, next. So from this study, we could conclude that uh, the cytoplasmic male sterility systems in sorghum influences the expression of resistance to shoot fly. And the shoot fly resistance traits are governed by additive type of gene action. And the hybrids of these uh, CMS-based systems were genotypically and phenotypically closer to cytoplasmic male sterile lines than the restorer lines. And the another Conclusion from these studies was the A4M Maldandi cytoplasm is uh, uh, comparatively resistant as compared to the other cytoplasmic systems, which can be used in uh, uh, sorghum hybrid programs. And at the last, resistance should, uh, if we want to have the insect resistant hybrids in those, uh, uh, we should have resistance in both the parents, if not in both the parents, at least. A4M cytoplasm, Maldandi cytoplasm can be transferred in the insect resistant, suit fly resistant background so that we can have better resistance as compared to the other. Next. And the other component, next. In the insect diapause. So this study also we have uh, conducted over a period of time and uh, it has been published in several uh, uh, highly recognized journals. So from this study, we could understand the what are the genetics of uh, this diapause, uh, whether uh, there is any uh, uh, races or you call it a different biotypes on, on, the, on, on this insect. And likewise, what are the effects on this physiology and behavior, et cetera. Next. So from these studies, we can conclude that diapause is although an adaptive mechanism to survive unfavorable conditions, but there is certainly a population uh, sacrifice during hibernation and estivation. Even these are the studies from the uh, laboratory, but uh, we expect these under uh, field conditions as well. Uh, when we are talking about the modeling, this Ekimoto and Takai, these are linear models and uh, lactin and lactin 1 and 2, these are non-linear models. These are the important models which temperature dependent development and estimating the thresholds of these diapausing pylopartless populations uh, can be determined. And based on these one, these prediction models could be useful for predicting the occurrence, seasonal emergence or number of generations and population dynamics of this insect. Diapause has been found to have deleterious effects on this post diapause development reproductive physiology and population growth. Also from these studies, we could see that there is changes in the biochemical profiles of these diapause populations. And also uh, uh, about the inheritance of resistance from that, we could understand that degree of dominance uh, of this uh, diapause, we could see that development and morphometrics of this calopatlas are governed by over dominance gene effects, mainly depends on the parental diapause history, and also suggest to explore appropriate genetic means for management of these populations under different agroecological regions. And another uh, important finding from these studies was 
that we could see uh, from uh, that uh, across the India, we have uh, four different biotypes in Kylopetalus, and namely Hyderabad, Hisar, Parbani, and Coimbatore. And for that, at least the test genotypes of either sorghum or maize, whatever the pest is. So all these four locations are important to test these uh, against for these uh, locations so that we can have the better resistance, stable resistance. So from temporal distribution of mating systems among adults of diapause, non-diapause and or ecologically diverse populations and their behavioral and physiological consequences under a given demographic framework could be rewarding. And from this, we suggest to devise appropriating mating disruption techniques so that we can stress this population under field conditions. Next. Under uh, this component, uh, BT crops, pest management and environmental safety to non-target organisms. From these also, from these studies, uh, several uh, uh, highly rated period journals we have published. And from the main conclusions of these studies are next. Next, yeah, uh, there are no direct effects of BT uh, on the parasites or predators. Whatever indirect effects we see in this one are either due to early mortality or poor quality of the host or prey. The generalist predators are less exposed to the transgene products as it is likely that not all prey are BT contaminated under field conditions because they have alternates. The transgenic plants have shown no adverse effects on the abundance of non-target insect pests, generalist predators, and parasites under field conditions. And if there are any, these are much lower than that of the insecticides. And the uh, uh, non-target beneficial arthropods, again, significantly lower in insecticide spread than that on the unsprayed conditions. So we can see how many, uh, how much loss to this biodiversity and natural means causes these insecticides. And in the last. The BT cotton as a case study from that we could see that it reduces the ballworm damage, increased seed yield, and also these are safer to natural enemies as compared to that of insecticides. From all these studies, we could conclude this. Next, insect plant interactions. This is a continuous process. And in that, uh, probably several uh, good publications have come over the years. And from these studies, at least we can see that uh, although we have deciphered several biochemical defense mechanisms against various insect pests, but understanding on biochemical defense and their metabolic pathways, the associated enzymes and gene regulation systems, biochemistry of host plant, as well as that of the uh, insect, associated insect, and the metabolic It's not audible now. Please put on the mic. Audibility issue, please. Sir, I think uh, WTC that uh, uh, there is a connect uh, net connectivity problem is there, so that's why they have left from the meeting. Uh, they will again join, sir.
There is break in voice, audibility zero. Morning, sir. They are they are resuming it, sir. They are working on it. Organizers, please. Nothing is audible. We lose track of presentation. Please do something.
we online participants are not able to listen.
I invite the dignitaries on the dais. Okay. Uh, to the online audience, uh, we are really sorry that there is a network issue in our system. Uh, so there, there were some interruption. Now we will start with the Young Entomologist Awardee. I'll give a uh, stage to the, sir. Yeah, I invite uh, Amalendu Ghosh, the Young Entomologist Awardee, to make his presentation. Can I do it for? 10 minutes and yes, sure, sir. maximum 12 minutes. Yeah. Thank you, sir. So good morning. Uh, I'm Amalindu Ghosh from uh, IRI New Delhi. And before I start, uh, I would like to uh, express my sincere gratitude to the Entomological Society of India. And I congratulate my fellow awardee. Uh, I basically work on, oh, Shall I wait or? Go ahead. Go ahead. So uh, I work on uh, two major vector thrips and white fly with the objective to understand the thrips, tosphovirus, and white fly begum virus relationship, aiming to interrupt the virus transmission and restrict the spread of the uh, thrips white fly population. Uh, so I shall talk on the uh, tosphovirus transmission by followed by begum virus transmission by white fly and then spray on application of DSRN as a novel management option. In uh, thrips tosphovirus relationship, the present understanding is largely uh, based on the Frankinella occidentalis and the tomato spotted wheel virus, TSWV. Detail is known about the other tosphovirus and thrips system or complex. So we reported that uh, the thrips pami, that is our model organism, thrips pami adult can only transmit the virus 
and the adult cannot become viviparous if virus acquisition is not taking place during the first instant larval stage. Although uh, these tosphoviruses like GBNB and WNB have negative effect on the life cycle of the thrips family, the viruses are efficiently transmitted by thrips. They modify the thrips life cycle in such a manner so that the virus is efficiently transmitted. Now, in case of the dissemination of the tosphovirus within the thrips system, uh, for successful transmission, this is the uh, schematic diagram of the thrips enulentary canal and salivary glands. The, for successful transmission, the virus infection should reach the primary salivary gland. And in case of thrips, the primary salivary gland are directly connected to the foregut or anterior portion of the foregut with a pair of ligament and tubular salivary gland. So the earlier concept tells that virus from the midgut directly travels to the PSG through the tubular salivary gland and adult cannot acquire the virus to become viviparous because TSG disrupt during the adult stage. So that is the current concept. So we tried to find out whether this is conserved in thieves spermy or different. So you can see this is the first one is the larval picture and second one is the adult picture and this is the TSG and it is intact across the life stages of the thieves. So the earlier concept of disruption of the tubular salivary gland in the adult stage is not correct. So now question is then what is the primary channel of the virus dissemination from the midgut to the primary salivary gland? So we found the initial infection occurs in the uh, epithelial cell of the anterior midgut and from there it travels to the primary salivary gland primarily through the connecting ligaments not via the tubular salivary gland as described in the earlier reports. Next question we answered that is the why cannot adult become viviparous if acquisition taking place in the adult stage. Basically, in the adults, the infection retained in the visceral circular muscle and the longitudinal muscles of the anterior midgut, and uh, there is no infection in the epithelial cell during the adult stage. In fact, the epithelial cell in the thrips adult uh, do not allow any face infection of the virus. So this is the susceptibility of the epithelial cell that actually determines the infection of the midgut only during the larval stage, but not in the adult stage. So this is the first evidence of tosovirus dissemination path in the thieves spermy, and that also clarifies the age-old concept of life stage specific tosovirus transmission by thrips. We also uh, established one primary cell culture of the thieves spermy and demonstrated the localization of tosovirus nucleocapsid protein in the nuclei of the thieves spermy cells in vitro. This cell culture, this primary cell culture serves as a platform for uh, study the thrips tosphovirus relationship in vitro. Uh, in a computational analysis, we predicted that the inversion of tosphovirus in the cellular system of the thrips involved the clathrin mediated endocytosis and two protein, the syntaxin 6 and UHRF binding protein 1, play important role in the viral fusion in RD endosome of the Trip cell. So that was uh, supported by the transcriptomic study and out of these differentially expressed genes of the thrips in response to the GBNB infection, we targeted two uh, genes. One is UHRA binding protein one and the PFAS of the thrips to silence using modified antisense oligos and see their effect. So that downregulates the target gene expression by two to three fold, and that also create uh, uh, induce around ninety percent mortality in the thrips, and with exposure the mortality reaches around hundred percent. And interestingly, uh, the ASO treatment, antisense oligo treatment, create morphological deformities in the treated thrips spermy. The body become flaccid and abdomen flatten in case of UHRF uh, one uh, binding protein one silencing and when we silence the PFAS of the thrips spermy, the appendages get twisted, body become brittle and little bit squeezed. And most importantly, the silencing of UHRF binding protein one and PFAS reduce the virus copy number in individual thrips spermy by 200 to 300 fold. So this could be the potential genetic target for reducing the crop damage by the thrips, as well as it will also restrict the virus transmission.
Now coming to the Begum virus transmission by the white fly, Begum virus are transmitted by white fly in a persistent circulative manner. That means the virus does not replicate within the vector and there is no transoviral transmission in general. For the first time, in exception to that, for the first time we reported the uh, eggs and the next generation adult of the Bemisia tavasi contains the viral DNA of Dolichos yellow mosaic virus. Not only that, the next generation adult can also uh, transmit the infection to the healthy plant and produce strong symptom. The CY3 probe hybridization also uh, proved the evidence of invasion of the virus in the reproductive organ of the white fly and also in the eggs. So this is the first evidence of transoviral transmission of a bipartite begum virus in white fly. And also this finding has epidemiological evidence because in absence of the host plant, Bemisia tavasi itself can serve as an alternate host and bridge the gap between the cropping season and immediately available to infect the plants when they are germinated in the field. In a different study, we also reported the dynamics of two different Begum virus in and out of the white fly during feeding. Although these virus uh, do not replicate within the vector, but their concentration increased due to the accumulation with time. We also tried to knock down the B. Tavasi uh, key genes by RNI and thereby restricting the transmission of the chili lip curl virus. So uh, based on the transcriptomic study, we targeted two genes of the white fly HSP70 and the fasciclin 2 and the oral delivery of DSRNA uh, downregulate the gene regulation by 8 to 12 fold. And that also induced a mortality around 70 to 80 percent. Interestingly, the, with the in, gradual increase of the HSP70 DSRNA in Bemisia tavasi, the viral concentration in individual white fly started reducing. And at a highest concentration, there was no virus copies detected within white fly. In contrast, when we silenced the fasciclin 2, the virus copies increased in the white fly, maybe due to the negative regulatory role of fasciclin 2 in Begum virus transmission. In line with that, in case of plant-to-plant -plant transmission, you can see the picture uh, with the increased concentration of HSP70 DSRNA, the transmission gradually reduced and at the highest concentration, there was no transmission under laboratory condition. So we thought whether this can be used like an insecticide and sprayed on the plant. So for that, we conducted one semi-field condition and the HSP70 DSRNA was sprayed like an insecticide with a 10 times higher dose than the control condition. And that uh, reduced the expression of the target gene by 4.6 fold. The virus copies was reduced by 10 to the power 9 fold. And there is about 75% reduction in the virus transmission from plant to plant. Uh, although some plants were PCR positive, but they uh, did not produce any symptom up to 50 days. That is very crucial phase of the crop growth because symptom appearance after that period does not have much significance in the yield reduction. The spray on application of the HSP70 DSRNA also uh, provide good control of the press infestation of the white fly up to eight days. And the second spray on the 10 days further increase the window up to 18 to 20 days. So this spray on application of DSRNA targeting the Bemisia uh, tavasi HSP70 provides significant mortality of the white fly and also restrict the spread of the Begum viruses. And this could be a potential eco-friendly alternative to the hazardous pesticide and can reduce the pesticide use. This is also alternative to the virus resistance transgenic plant development program. So with this, uh, I just finish my talk. I uh, uh, acknowledge the uh, support I received from my institute, IRI, uh, organization ICR, my funding agency, my collaborators, uh, laboratory students, SRF and laboratory staff. Thank you. Dr. Amlendu, very nice presentation. Thank you, From basics to applied, I think uh, end to end, yeah. your research has progressed in that fashion and uh, great compliments to you because as an young scientist, you are able to think about an application for a basic study. And that too solving a very important intricate uh, disease problems transmitted by insects like leaf curl and all virus problems. I hope you will work on uh, CLCU leaf curl virus of cotton as well. <laughs> because the same Bemisia tabasai so, uh, Asia biotype 2.1 is also 
-hmm. the vector for leaf cold virus, yes. which is actually damaging a lot. This season, expression was 30% of the plant incidence in uh, North India, especially in Punjab. Great damage it is causing. Yes. And I hope you will, or your group or some other group is already working on this. Basically, sir, what we are doing, that is based on the, uh, that is a model organism, uh, Chile leaf cold virus and Bemisiate versus ACR21. So that whatever findings we have, that can be extend to the other patho system also with little bit modification and optimization. Yeah. So if any urgent burning question is there, we can take one. Otherwise, we'll go for next presentation. Thank you, Dr. Amalendu. Thank you, sir. Dr. Guru Prasanna Pandi. Guru Prasanna Pandi. Young, young entomologist awardee, presentation for 12 minutes or so. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. So, honorable dignitaries and the most respected teachers, senior colleagues, friends, and my dear students, a warm welcome to everyone. First of all, I would like to thank the ESI for giving me this prestigious award and also giving me the opportunity to share my significant achievements in the field of rice and pest management, some of the strategies we have developed, and I have learned some field learning. This presentation, I am going to present in the five different subtopics, starting from post plant resistance, then molecular entomology, climate change aspects, pesticide, and lastly, IPM. So when uh, I started my career as a PhD student from IRI, then I started my scientific career from NRI, I have been assigned to work on screening of germplasm against brown plant upper, one of the notorious pests in rice. And following the standard protocol developed by IRRI and a little bit to be modified for our conditions, we have screened different germplasm available at our gene bank as well as from the NPPGR gene bank and some of the material from ICRE. Till now, in this line of work, can access in our website. It is daily available. And from there, you can see from the year for the particular gen person screen year 2004 or 1960, that gen person, what is the status now that we can see. Further, after identification of the resistant in the laboratory condition, we have studied the mechanism of resistance by this poor character in antigenesis as well as antibiasis and again with the genotypic parameters. For this genotyping, I have selected 93 gene-linked markers spanning the rice chromosome starting from 1 to 12, covering 34 PPH resistant genes. Here I am presenting only a single case study. Here I, we took Odisha farmers variety. That is a panel of 600 variety. Upon this Your 600 variety screen for consecutively three years, we have selected 112 variety for genotyping analysis. And we found that through the genotypic analysis, it's found uh, structure 3, K3, that our Please other analysis, the slide. Western analysis also supported this study. Oh, yeah, I am pressing the slide. Here. The unique observation we observed here, two gen plus resistant source also present in the same cluster as of PTP33 and Salkati and known BPS resistant sources. Further, after the phenotypic and genotypic parameter, we have uh, put it in the general linear model and multilinear model to identify the resistant gene which are associated with BPH. Among the different genes has been reported till now, these four genes I have listed here, BPH 36, 33, and 19, have highly associated with BPH resistance. These genes can be useful for development of resistant variety down the line. Guru, your slides are not moving. These, uh, all the works has been already communicated and published in the standard journal. Further to see the molecular level of resistance, we have conducted a study taking uh, resistant. Excuse me, uh, Dr. Guru. Germplasm. Resistant is a Salkati and susceptible germplasm is a TN1. We have seen the proteomic analysis here. What are the different kind of protein expressed during the course of infestation from the different time period? Zero as well as up to six hours. This study yielded us related to the stress, responsive to stress. Further, to validate the result we get from the sequencing data, we have taken this many number of genes for RT-PCR analysis to validate the study. Among these genes, we have 
uh, uh, identified these nine genes have amplified among this nine genes six genes here i have listed here this expression only occur during the early infestation not in the later infestation where it is expressing during the initial hour but it inf this inf uh, this is another important gene here you can see clearly the tn1 this expression not occurred only in the variety salkathi it's exert so this you can this gene can be a potential target we can go for the controlling of bph if you are developing the some resistant variety so this works this coast plant resistant works led to uh, development of uh, bph resistant rice variety that is cr process of releasing in other states other than that we have already identified two lines in uh, navin background as well as we also get released for bps resistant uh, further in the molecular entomology i have done this complete mitochondrial genome sequenciation why you have done this work till now as you know that by in bps more biotypes are available of which biotype 4 still now there is no information available in our gene bank so this our biotype biotype 4 we have sequenced which it is available in the public database this will serve as the reference genome whoever will be working on the down the future line they can use this as a reference genome and one of the most unique finding we observed here two genetic rearrangement occurred in our population biotype 4 here you can see this is the sample from our study here we have observed in the two region gene rearrangement occurred as well as only extra copy of the gene present in our sample but the message that the slides are not moving can we please upload again from this slide you can proceed now it's moving online online tell us start sir okay after this yeah after this uh, we also observed the nucleotide diversity of this uh, reported gene 30, 37 uh, mitochondrial genes why i am giving this slide here among the 37 different genes genes like we know cox1 is highly used for identification of dna barcode and species identification other than cox1 like species specificity also is there in this uh, mitochondrial genome we can use cox2 also for evaluation purpose but like atp atp8 or nad gene which can be useful for identification of different biotypes because their nuclear diversity is very less uh, other than bph we also sequenced uh, two other insect namely rice gandhi bug leptocoris oratoria and uh, green chamelopor chrysotexis acuta this also has been communicated and sir next slide is not moving yeah then another important study we done in the bph we have identified we have uh, identified the different hotspot location in india where bph severity is more those locations we have collected populations these population used for genetic diversity studies as well as migration pattern study we have identified the genetic diverse diversity here you can see this is the haplotype map analysis the left one a the Pink color is shows that South Asia population and the um, black one is the Japan population, green one is the China population. We can see here that South Asia population having the close association with China population, not with the Japan population. The Japan population and our, our population is entirely different and unique. There may be a reason and, uh, till we are not analyst, but uh, what I'm thinking as a researcher, most of our varieties based on Oresa sativa, the Japan variety, uh, maybe it's due to Oresa japonica. So that kind of analysis we have to do in the later period to confirm this result. And uh, the migration pattern also we have analyzed. We identified the bi-directional mi migration we identified from South Asia to China, from between China to Japan. There is a migration is occurring, but between China and India, sorry, South Asia, we didn't observe any migration pattern through model, but um, with radar entomology, we'll be further down the, the line, we can get this uh, empirical result. And this also has been communicated and published. Another important area is climate change and uh, uh, I have worked with Dr. Chubachandra in my PhD in climate change. So that same work I am also continued a little bit further in our institute. We identified the positive effect of climate change means elevated CO2 on BPH. This uh, elevated CO2 increase the multiplication rate of BPH. There are two reasons. One is the fecundity. And under elevated CO2, BPH experience more number of fecundity as well as their duration of development is 
development was more. But in terms of plant phenology, under elevated CO2 condition, the plant CN ratio got changed. That is the one aspect. Another one important aspect is crop canopy circumference. Means more amount of growth we have observed under the elevated CO2 condition. Why I am stressing this means, and when we are developing any plant production methodology in future condition, we have to keep in this character in consideration. For example, now we are using 500 liter of water to spray in the per hectare basis. When the plant canopy is going to increase, so what may be the what may be the best spray solution that we have to work on the land? And another one on BPS, here we have identified the different uh, location details. This has been fed to the uh, model to identify the, what is the future potential distribution of brown bond upper in India. Here you can see at present, BPS having the most suitable area in India is only 7.5% of our total land. But this may increase in the uh, future. For example, in the 2050, if whatever the climate prediction done by IPCC is true and uh, any uh, it will then it will be going to increase from 15 to 27 percentage in the year 2070 there is alarming rate if we are not making any era, um, progress to reduce the CGC case emission then the infestation may increase up to 50 percentage or more than 50 percentage and uh, coming to the pesticide here we have done uh, efficacy study as well as residue study and reduce the point source pollution and this is the triflu mesoferum. This is the unique molecule. Now it is effectively working on its BPH. For first time, we have studied the residue dynamics of this molecule, as well as another molecule is colandranate fluid. This is also the highly used molecule in the rice ecosystem. For this uh, molecule, what is the if, if you are simulating the condition, natural condition, we, erratic rainfall is there and different water condition is there. These conditions we have simulated in the laboratory condition. So what will happen to these chemicals? We studied when there is a erratic rainfall, when you are applying this insecticide, if you are not giving minimum four hours of period, there is no use in using this insecticide to control any target pest. Another one important uh, study we did to avoid the point source pollution means we are using the most number of chemicals, but when we are pumping there are those uh, chemicals will get leach off and it will go to the uh, river basin as well as the groundwater pollution. So we have developed a model here using the different biomixers as well as biochar. And we have applied the chemical in the top of the layer. We applied and we observed and we are collecting the leachates every day up to 90 days. Even after 90 days we collected, only 2% of chemical applied in the top reached to the leachate using this biochar bio as well as our biomixer. That means 98% of the chemical, it get dropped in this biomixer and biochar. So this could be a, one of the best options. It is can be applicable in the field condition. So we can avoid the point source pollution and uh, leaching of this chemical to the runways as well as the river sources. Yes. And as uh, efficacy purpose, we have developed, we have in our previous study, we identified Efficacy of this eucalyptus oil against two storage pests. We found this is a quite effective. So we uh, thought that we developed the nano emulsion. This nano emulsion methodology also has been characterized and this has been found effective. And this is the last uh, one, two slides, sir. Under IPM, uh, as you all, all you know, Trichoroma japonicum is one of the best uh, parasites available for controlling OSP. Here we used Ephistia cochneella as well as Citrodoca cereal as the factories host. We observed this is an important study you can see here. Rather than Carcera sapolonica, when the Trigoroma japonicum reared in Ephesia cochneella, it have increased parasitism rate and their field parasitism against OHP also increased. This is, uh, we identified the uh, efficacy of this one important botanical against uh, BPS. This also has been published. And the last, we also have conducted an extensive survey in Eastern India among around 450 farmers to assess their behavior, why they are using pesticide or different kind of pesticide, what may be the reason. And we found that in on their own moral norms, the social pressure is the, one of the main reason to use. It's not like that I want to use, uh, I observe my field, I want to use it. If others are also using, so I have also used in the, my field. So the social pressure also one of the important norms casing the farmers to spray insecticide. So to break this juncture, knowledge is the one important component that need to be applied in the field condition for judicious application of pesticide. So the summary, I have already discussed all things, so I am not yeah. repeating here. Yeah, right. And finally, these are the clinches of some field visit and these are the products available, uh, commercially available from our institute, from our group, our three uh, biocontrol agents. And uh, last one is the microbial consortia. It can be used against rice pest and disease and one uh, up. I am actually participated in this. 
and finally i would like to thank all my funding agency for providing the opportunity to conduct this kind of research and uh, my sincere gratitude to all the mentors starting from dr ramu murthy sir dr subhash chandar my msc guide dr biswajit pal my immediate uh, boss dr maya binijana there from there i learned what i am doing today as well as my sincere thanks to all my colleagues from uh, team cpt nrri as well as my past students and the present students who are working with me till now thank you thank you Dr. Guru Prasanna, very nice presentation. Thank you. Uh, you work with genetic diversity and a lot of diversity is there in your research as well. Yes, sir. Right from uh, post-plant resistance to climate change to farmer behavior. So very diverse topics you have been working. And then white-backed plant hopper. Yes, this sir. is in the news recently in Punjab and yes, Northeast, uh, North, North India, North India, especially grasses and virus disease. I think oh, your uh, screening of combining markers Yes, based, sir. Uh, uh, actually, I'm mainly focusing on uh, BPH, and our one more scientist is working on WPPH. WPPH and BPH work will throw some light, some solution for the new emerging problem in rice. Yes, sir. especially Definitely. in the North India. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you for the opportunity. Now I invite Dr. K. Selvaraj to make his presentation as an young scientist, young entomologist awardee. Twelve minutes, please. Yes, sir. Good afternoon, everybody. Respected dignitaries, uh, eminent entomologists on the dais, uh, up the dais, and as well as online. Uh, I am Dr. Selvraj, a senior scientist working at ICR NBIR. Uh, I, my personalization is uh, white field taxonomy, biological control, IPM, and uh, insect ecology and climate change impact assessment. This is my uh, uh, the outcome of uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the 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 presentation. Uh, this is the uh, the the presentation uh, in the nutshell that uh, my academic profile. Uh, my completed my school studies from the government I sent a school uh, and uh, my completed my BS agriculture from uh, TNAU. MSc Agriculture from uh, CCHAU, Ariana, and my then I pursued my PhD from IRI, and my my initial posting almost five years I served at Central Research Institute for Jute and Allied Paper, and then uh, the NBIR from 2016. So after joining my NBIR, I, I most of my work on uh, the uh, in my presentation I covered the white fly where I conducted at NBIR and uh, few studies at uh, my previous institute. Next, please. As we know, uh, the uh, the in biological knowledge is a great matter of concern for the biodiversity and uh, the uh, the Indian economy. The more than 110 invasive white uh, invasive insect pests are recorded from India, uh, out of which uh, the white flies are major portion of that. In India, more than 16 uh, 469 white flies are reported under 71 genera, and out of which the 80 uh, eight species are invasive white flies. Next, please. Uh, these are all the invasive white flies, eight invasive white flies in the, uh, from India, and most of the invasives are recorded from uh, in, in the coconut ecosystem. Next. Uh, almost all the invasive white flies are the, the originated from the uh, originated from this uh, uh, what, uh, the neotropical origin. And these are all the uh, invasive white flies in the distribution in India. Uh, almost uh, the, the uh, since it's the coconut, uh, the most of the invasives are uh, the uh, predominant in the coconut ecosystem. So this is very predominant wherever this coconut is cultivated. Uh, the my first uh, the record is uh, 2016. That is the invasive white fly, Rugos filing white fly, where I most of the uh, uh, work concentrated on that that aspect from the identification to the management, including the two technology development. And as the, the common name indicates, it is like almost look like similar to the earlier or the first invasive white fly, the spiraling white fly, Alirotechus disperses, but it's an adult as well as the, there are uh, few differences in the taxonomy point of view. And this adult is the, this is the largest white fly so far known from in India. And next slide is not moving. Dr. Sashan, so who is there? Yeah, so these are all the uh, the, the major difference, uh, the taxonomic difference between these uh, uh, two uh, the predominant white fly species in India, where as common name indicate, the scientific name indicate, 
the rugose uh, appearance in the uh, operculum ventral side this is the the main difference in the particular species in the adult they have given the brown band this is the major difference and these are all the different life stages of this uh, rugose feeling white fly and then uh, 2019 we have also recorded one more white fly that is a form infesting white fly it is in dark and color uh, dark color uh, except adult uh, sorry uh, after the in the from the first instar onwards it will turn into the dark in color and uh, it will also secrete a lot of honeydew and it will make the shooting mold uh, dark and shooting mold it, it uh, interfering the normal photosynthesis of the form and this white fly is also uh, creating major havoc uh, in the south india and uh, the infestation even it goes to the up to the 100% the major establish the well establishment so far we have this the most preference towards the coconut and oil form and this is a major taxonomic uh, identification as uh, 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 what you call uh, this uh, allotricus attractus and which is uh, different from this closely associated or the uh, the cl closer species allotricus trachyda species which is solana white fly which is also predominant on mainly on the solanaceous crops these are all the different life stages of this particular uh, form infesting white fly and next uh, full slide is not visible uh, uh, this is the uh, uh, the woolly white fly this is a, we have recorded in november 2019 and uh, this is the the uh, although this in the native countries is a series based on citrus but in Ga in india so far we have recorded only on gava and it is well distributed in almost in the entire south india and uh, same as uh, the symptom of damage uh, we can see that uh, uh, the how the the colonies the diagnostic characters and here also infestation even reached to the, up to the uh, 100% complete coverage of the host plant and even complete depolition occurred and this is the different life stages of this particular uh, white fly and uh, this is the taxonomic uh, character of uh, this particular white fly where the uh, the margin is having the coarse teeth uh, as compared to this uh, solana white fly and uh, uh, few more there are white fly maybe for the um, um, the those who are uh, the, the, the there are the all new species so i have included some of the uh, life stages of this solana white fly where this is very predominant in the solanaceous and convolvulaceae plants it's very serious issues and many of these uh, uh, sal uh, many of the state i will come in the distribution and uh, this is this uh, bandar nesting white fly where uh, the the it make nest and they like a bird like nest using the uh, the wax material and this is the bandar nesting white, this is nesting white fly that is a paraliodus mini and uh, there are a lot uh, some difference in the adult where the except marking in the adult and which is absent in the uh, mini and this is another uh, legume feeding white fly this is also emerging in india and this is the tetralirotus acacia it is mostly host preferent towards the legume most of the legume crops and uh, this all this work uh, we have published uh, consolidated in the pyta parasitica recently and also the many articles in the uh, uh, in the newspaper and uh, we have also studied this uh, distribution map uh, the current and future distribution using maxen model and this study is so far we have carried out only for the rugos and uh, the other species we are in the uh, process of developing the model and this paper is published in journal of phytoparasitic sorry agrometrology and uh, uh, as uh, the the white flies as you know that most of the white flies are adults are lethargic in nature but it's mostly mediated through the human being the uh, the movement of infested seed mat seed, uh, seedling material from uh, seed material from the infested seedling from one portion to another portion almost all the white flies are highly polypagous and uh, where we can see that how the host range of uh, all the invasive white fly they are uh, the prepared host plant and uh, there are some of the host plant the the rugose infestation on different host plant we can see that in globally more than 120 host plant is recorded in india more than 45 host plant i have recorded and uh, this is a coexistence with another very uh, very uncommon phenomena where uh, as in ecology as uh, the the more than one species may not be coexist in the same niche but it's not in case of this white fly uh, even in the native countries also with the same behavior as uh, oh, these are coexisting each other even in the same plant in the same leaf same in the same colony they are coexist we can see in the uh, images uh, almost all the crop there may be some novel mechanism which is uh, man managing this row, uh, this um, uh, the coexistence, uh, the kind of the survival mechanism and exploiting the ecosystem. And uh, this is the impact where you can see the, how the normal uh, the uh, normal photosynthesis of the plant and uh, the depleting the nutrition and water from the plant. And uh, this is seriously affecting even this allotrixus trachytis actus a vector. 
and uh, it's actually a lot of honey dew. You can see the complete shooting wall development and uh, the even complete drying and uh, drooping of infestation, uh, the, uh, the infested leaf will be observed for this white fly. And uh, come to the natural enemy, it, uh, most of these white flies are reached in the outbreak situation. As we can see that uh, we, have we have recorded only parasitate for dispersus and atreatus and rugos, but other white fly, we don't have any potential parasitate in India. So it shows that the, they are maybe entered in India without any their natural enemy complex. And uh, these are all the natural enemies where uh, uh, rugos piling white fly. That is a, uh, this is the poly potential parasitide, Encarce godolope, up to the 82 parasitism, 82 percent parasitism, rugos and uh, spiraling white fly, Encarce dispersa and rugos and uh, um, uh, spiraling white fly. And this parasitide recently we have recorded, uh, Encarce covenancies on palm infesting white fly. And this paper is communicated in Phyta parasitica, it is under review. And except there are many uh, in, uh, like indigenous predators. And uh, we have also the uh, identified the one potential endomopathenic fungus, Isaria pemacerosia, which kill almost all the life stages of all the invasive white flies and giving up to the 80 to 78 percent of repealed condition. This we have developed with further different formulation, and we have also commercialized this Isaria pemacerosia and to four companies. And these are all the different natural enemies in the associated with this invasive white flies. And uh, sorry. Uh, this is the, as I said, this is the new parasitide we have recovered from the salirotrical uh, traders. Although we have lost two years, we are attempting to release the two parasitide from Hawaii. Meantime, we have recovered this parasitide, recovered and identified. It's also giving very good parasitism uh, up to the 68% so far. And uh, probably I expect that it may be in the reaching uh, more than 80% in future because once the prevailing condition, when, once it established in India. And uh, these are two technologies we have developed for this uh, rugos spiraling white fly for Encarce godolope. Yes. Uh, redistribution is nothing but the field insect technique. We have to conserve in the in situ conservation and distribute to the uh, the adjoining or the next wherever the infestation is occurring. Uh, the pa pa the parasitized nymphs will be uh, di redistribution because the pest move during uh, during the adult stage, so they will detach from the uh, host insect. So we need to. Uh, we need to power for the redistribution of this parasitide, the inoculative release. Then in inundative release, we have also uh, standardized the mass production uh, technique for this particular parasitide. And we are recommending the more than standardized for the 600, 600 parasitized nymphs, uh, minimum two spray to bring down the pest population. And we have also standardized the release technique for this particular parasitide. And we have also, uh, the more emphasis we also given for conservation parasitic control, as we know, uh, initially during our madam time, we have uh, conducted one brainstorming session and we have called all the stakeholders and first to declare the pesticide reality. This is the most important achievement. Uh, based on that, so far, none of our, uh, either the state government or the central institution, those who are working in the white flies, we are not recommending any of the insects. So still now this formula is we are following. And we have also formula in the NBR, we have uh, standardized the habitat manipulation technique using the Canna India plant or banana is the intercrop, which is also giving the very good uh, control for this uh, parasitide. And then we have a huge extension work we have conducted uh, using the 60 extension uh, program and different trainings we have carried out. And this formulation, Isaria uh, uh, Pumasaracea, we have standardized and we have formulated different formulations and we have also evaluated against other other uh, non-target organism or different uh, Pambax mori, Sudamalada, uh, the goniosis. And this is the different, uh, the infection of this particular Isaria. And this we have supplied this uh, both predator as well as the pa parasitide and uh, the Isaria we have distributed to different stakeholders in India for their augmentation and spraying. And then we have conducted several trainings for the different on farm production to department officials, farmers. And uh, we have established this production unit in Andhra Pradesh and one at Tamil Nadu. And one, one mobile app we have developed for the uh, Satpada Harest W. And this we have some studies on uh, genetic groups of uh, Bemisia Dapasi. And uh, two genetic groups we have uh, uh, determined, and the ACA1 and ACA21, and more than 80 DNA sequences submitted for the white play and their natural enemies. Okay, and this, uh, this is covered uh, documentation at my previous institution. And there are some studies at my previous institution, the, uh, the climate science studies, uh, thermal constant, and some post paper uh, uh, influence on the uh, two uh, in important pests, spilosoma and uh, mite. And this is all one germ blossom, uh, also associated with one germ blossom registration, which is uh, completely resistant against spilosoma. And this is one JAP expert, uh, this is the expert system for the jute and allied papers. And uh, these are all my technologies and their trainings and dem several demonstration activities. We can see that most of my uh, times will spend for the uh, teaching the farmers and other stakeholders. 
and uh, uh, the one by deputed to uh, sark training for attending the ipm training and also i deputed to australia for brisbane australia to get the hands on training on parasitoid uh, white fly parasitoid and uh, also they were guided uh, one teaching uh, uh, associated one teaching in uh, ramakrishna mission and guided two students and also the okay, master trainer thank you thank you sir thank you thank you very much nice presentation thank you Dr. Selvaraj, I think you have done a very good work on the invasive Rugo's white fly and uh, other white fly yes, species, sir. and also um, the distribution maps, and also commercialized yes, the sir, both the technology solutions for this uh, white fly, and also habitat management and pesticide holiday. I think you and Madam have really held the fort because the tendency is to go for insecticide applications that would have actually endangered much more than. Done much more harm than good. Thank you very much for your yeah. nice work. Thank, thank you. you. We don't have time for questions. Okay, thank, thank you. Now I invite Dr. Shashank uh, to make his presentation. Twelve minutes, please. A very good afternoon to everyone, uh, all the dignitaries, and uh, all the senior entomologists uh, in the auditorium. Uh, online and offline. So uh, today I'm going to talk about uh, my journey in uh, into the insect world. Actually, uh, from my master's onwards, uh, it's been a ro ro like a roller coaster journey, being an agricultural entomologist and taking a taxonomy and uh, staying true to your profession and also for passion. So my I'm, I'm presenting my work uh, in three uh, different uh, subheadings. Uh, the first one is what I exactly started with, uh, taxonomic revisions, and uh, which I am covering. And after that, uh, the service we are providing, insect diagnostics, and uh, monitoring and management of insect invasive pests. The first uh, uh, foundation for my taxonomic work started at uh, Bapatla. And, uh, my boss, I'm the first student for my boss, MSV Chellam, he's a leaf hopper specialist. And my work was to study uh, leaf hopper and plant hopper from uh, coastal Karnataka. And also because at that time, most of the agricultural universities wanted us to work in some management aspects. So the last word has been included in my, in my topic, which is completely different from my taxonomy work. However, I could, I could work on uh, leaf hopper and plant hopper taxonomy and I could uh, study, because MSc is just a training, I could study around more than 20 leaf hopper species and about uh, six plant hopper species, which are important to rice ecosystem. At the same time, uh, this is my first paper, which because I'm really excited to tell at that time, being an MSc student publishing one single paper was really a uh, happy moment. So my first paper was on evaluation of novel insecticides on plant hopper and leaf hoppers. After that, I have joined for PhD to uh, uh, GKVK, uh, US Bangalore. And uh, my topic was uh, on understanding the cryptic species, actually host associated cryptic species of Conogethus uh, punctiferalis. So uh, to address this issue, I uh, so we, we selected an integrated approach and I'm really fortunate enough to work with all the stalwarts at that time and still now. So uh, for every aspect, uh, we have selected a person who is really, really good at that. So we have, we have addressed all the issues uh, uh, a common entomologist will ask to differentiate two species. The first thing we in Conogethes punctiferalicus, which is feeding on castor and cardamom, we have studied morphologically, and we found that there are some differences. And at the same time, we also gone into the DNA barcoding and we found that there is a difference between the species, uh, between the host associated populations. And later we have also studied behavioral aspects of it coming, uh, taking pheromone as a basis. Before doing for pheromonal experiments, we tried to understand what is the, when the pheromone is produced. So, when the moth will emerge. So we all studied daily adult emergence rhythms and how many days the adult uh, female and male moths will survive. 
all this data and we published in very good journals and also we have done interbreeding studies so there are a lot of studies we done and we we concluded uh, we, we have done interbreeding studies after that we have also evaluated uh, pheromonal molecules both uh, abdominal gland extracts and also available synthetic extracts and we found that both the populations they are different at minor molecule level rather than the major molecule level and this was really interesting study but however i could not publish as uh, the cardamom feeding population as a new species because of uh, accessibility to study the type specimen so in 2018 we could publish this conagetha sayadrensis which is a species now recognized species which only feed on cardamom and uh, in this paper because i was in ara i could add a lot of data to this paper and we have done whole genus revision of conagetha with a lot of molecular data and it has been published in 2018 after that, in 2012, I have joined IRA as a scientist. I'm really fortunate and thanks to Dr. Amusti sir, who brought me to IRA and I joined NPC. After that, I started working on Lepidopter taxonomy. So my first project is DST Fast Track Grant, which I got for taxonomy of Plusine. And this is one of the important uh, pest group. And we could, we could study uh, the, all the species which occur in agriculturally important ecosystems. And we have revised this complete uh, subfamily and we have published this monograph uh, in uh, Zootexa with first time we have generated all the reference DNA barcodes. That means each specimen have that barcode along with the taxonomy records. And you can see these are just plates which a lot of data has been put into this and my student uh, Twinkle, she worked on this. And we have also published a, uh, a website so that all uh, people can just go to that and check for uh, a morphological identification. Uh, another uh, work which uh, which we recently published is uh, Moths of Delhi. When I came to Delhi at 2012, I started studying the moths of uh, Delhi. Uh, and uh, we have published uh, a, a, a huge data set of uh, more than 2,000 specimens along with uh, uh, like illustrations of 195 species. And it's a data of eight years. Recently, uh, uh, I, my, one of my MSc student, Komal, she helped me in publishing this. And of course, because it's Delhi, you get a lot of media attention. And uh, the another work uh, I have started uh, uh, is uh, understanding the, because I have a background with pheromones. So I always look taxonomy in a different way. So uh, we, we, we had a doubt that the, uh, uh, sensilla is very important to understand the pheromone chemistry, but we don't have a lot of data and morphology of sensilla. So we, we, we took this work and uh, along with Rani, she's at IHR, and we have studied the morphological uh, characterization of Eris Vetella, and we published this in 2021, and we found that nine distinct types of sensilla occur in Indian population of Eris Vetella, and that's very unique. And this paper, This paper has been published in Micron, which is mostly a microscopic journal. But uh, the good thing is uh, this paper has been most popular paper till now after the publication. I'm really happy for that because it's 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 very including uh, publication. And also uh, the expertise in molecular entomology paid me many times. And I collaborated with my collaborator, uh, my colleague, Dr. Naresh Mishram. And we started understanding three important aspects one is anyway we are describing a lot of as a taxonomist we are describing a lot of new species but is that all the new species just we are describing uh, like we wanted to understand the relationship and we had to go ahead with a lot of new novel data so we started uh, collaborating i started collaborating with leaf upper group and we have published series of publications with dr naresh mishram you can see on all these because we have added a lot of molecular data, they have, we got this published in very good journals. And uh, we also got around four research external funded projects for this work. Until now, I have like in different publication, I have, uh, of course, uh, I have published uh, small new records, new species and all. 
Uh, and the next responsibility which we have at IRA is insect diagnostics. And of course, every year we get a lot of samples for insect diagnostics. And uh, I, I have like, on an average, I have contributed around 200 specimens per year and more than 40 institutes. This is a good way to collaborate with people. People send specimens to you and you interact with them. And this is, I really enjoy this. And the next is research expedition. Being a taxonomist, everybody want to go to field because I, I got external funded projects. I could explore so many places. And uh, along with my research, I'm doing expeditions also. And also insect collection management because National Pusa Collection is very old and we have to manage the already existing collections. And now we have also published, uh, we, have, uh, we have this National Pusa Collection website also. Now we are slowly distressing all our collections and we want to go online. In 2014, I started working on invasive insects. The, it, 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 it's a coincidence, being an insect diagnostic center, I got this specimen from Dr. Chandrasekhar, Pune. And so slowly I started working uh, on Tuta absoluta. And this is our first record, which is published uh, in 2015 in Indian Journal of Entomology. And later we have also started monitoring of this pest throughout the India, along with my collaborators. And we, we started working on different aspects of Tuta absoluta. Because it's a new pest, every aspect is important. So we published our first uh, molecular phylog molecular uh, uh, genetics uh, study in Tribotech and later along with Dr. Fond, I also, what because you when, you when you survey a lot of area, you have this presence and absence data. So we could generate a lot of presence and absence data. Dr. Fond is good at modeling. So I just collaborated with Dr. Fond and we could publish and we could understand the uh, ecological mish modeling and how this pest can be dangerous. And also we, we First, when it entered the India, we first published a rapid action plan in ICR News so that people can adopt the rapid action plan and also for farmers' education. Anyway, fortunately, in North India, it has not become so severe compared to South India. But at that time, we, we were ready with whatever things we wanted to do. And because of this work, I also got a lot of global collaborations and we we published two important review papers for two top zilda which has been cited highly and one of the paper which published recently i am the like 47th author it's a global analysis of ipm package we have done for 37 countries it's a wonderful paper when we work with those people we will also understand in what way we have to look into these uh, problems and also the Nepal Agriculture uh, Research uh, Council scientists also approached us for identification and what we have done on Tuta. So we could collaborate with them, we could share data and we published small papers with them. And yes, sir, I'm done. And this is my uh, 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 like only Tuta, which, I, which was a Lepidopteran and also which we could identify. And we covered all the aspects of Tuta Absoluta except management, uh, because I'm, I'm not into that. So I thank all the collaborators who helped me in this. And also being a biodiversity uh, worker, a taxonomy worker, I also get involved in a lot of uh, outreach programs and also uh, in citizen science programs. And I thank uh, all my uh, faculty and all my research scholars, because most of the work at IRI, which, which, which will be helped by my students, and I had a really good team every time. I am so lucky that I get very good students. And I got a good external funding uh, uh, support from the beginning. And uh, being a taxonomist, getting recognition is always good uh, because it encourages you to do more. And I recently, I got uh, different awards, of course. But I am. I want to mention this Agriculture Today Award, which exclusively given to an agriculture scientist, because our work in invasive insects and especially insect diagnosis, had they have recognized. I was really happy that somebody is really recognizing insect diagnosis. So I thank all my collaborators and funding agencies, and there are so many people who helped me to come here and present in front of you. I thank everyone. Thank you.
thank you dr sashank i think uh, the combined use science to communicate your results and then connect with the public and uh, whatever you have done as a taxonomist you have been taking it to the end users in, you, the, in different ways and means and a lot of the, done a lot of collaborative network research tapping the potential of each other and then coming out with and that eventually led to global connections as well. thank you and uh, thank commend you, you on your work and you, all sir. the best wishes to you. thank you Mr. thank you thanks so we would like to go with the last presentation best phd thesis awardee dr b karyanna Uh, namaste to all. Uh, like, I'm very happy to uh, be here and uh, to present my, you know, PhD, uh, you know, uh, achievements. Actually, uh, for my masters, uh, I started with uh, taxonomy. I worked on Cerambicidae, and I had one monograph on Longhorn beetle of India. And later, like, uh, I thought to go for like molecular aspect and I just approached my professor, my er earlier guide, like co-guide Dr. Mohan sir, who is in NBR. So then he agreed, like, you know, I'm a student of uh, US Raichur. So where I enrolled for PhD under Dr. Uh, no, under uh, supervision of uh, Dr. A. Probras, sir. So I just approached uh, Mohan sir, like, you know, just, I want to work on this and could you please guide me regarding. And uh, we had one, I means sir, uh, sir uh, is having one project related to uh, genomic resources and uh, it's like you know a huge project and there uh, they have already had one uh, mm -hmm. draft genome of loose nodes uh, they were already uh, developed that and they had that info and he told like you know we can work on it only thing is like you know you have to learn so then okay i took that projects and uh, i we, we just uh, collaborated with uh, that project, particular project and uh, initially like uh, sir was given like uh, it was a simple project uh, simple uh, thesis assessment like you know only to study the identification and functional analysis of cytochrome p50 and their resistant uh, effect on loose uh, in loose node analysis against different insecticide like that but in the course of time like you know because of uh, the resource availability and uh, facilities provided by icr nbr made me to take a few more uh, group of genes like you know glutathione ester transferases as well as uh, carboxyl esterases by keeping that in mind like you know i went with a deeper uh, expedition like you know deeper, uh, deeper research uh, like you know identification uh, identification and functional analysis of genes which are involved in insecticide resistance in lucinoda sub analysis that was my you know complete and comprehensive research title which uh, i took and the base for uh, this particular uh, thesis to take up was like we know that uh, you know lucinoda sub analysis is one of the important pests and it is causing so much uh, havoc and enormous damage and uh, brinjal and uh, regularly like you know farmers are using so much of uh, insecticide on it and it's causing uh, nearly up to 60 to 90 percent damage so by keeping that in mind like uh, means uh, uh, I, uh, I took this as a project and like uh, uh, so it was like earlier uh, you know, going exactly to the molecular aspect will not be so uh, like kind of convince you like uh, let me take some uh, even uh, you know ecological part as well as some uh, toxicological part that will give uh, you know correlative aspects so that we can easily conclude the topic like that. So then I went with a uh, different uh, what's called objectives. Uh, first objective was like you know population dynamic of hallucinated sub analysis against different cultivars and followed by like you know insecticide uh, uh, it's called resistant population identification across the India and by using that like you know uh, you know different uh, uh, sort of screening of the different uh, genes for example cytochrome p40 glutathione s transferases and carboxyl esterases and followed by like uh, their expression study because uh, i have collected around the wide field population across the india and they are resistant over the isofemur line which are already man ma you know, maintaining in uh, icr nbr since 5 to 6 years so that uh, I means i have done and followed by like a knockdown of the key uh, resistant genes like you know whatever i got from the expression study so that I went for further analysis and I got uh, so conclusive data and I will express one by one. The first object was like, uh, you know, population dynamic of hallucinated sub analysis um, against different cultivars. So here I have took some uh, uh, three uh, types of cultivars, like one or uh, two hybrids and one improved variety that is Manjari Gota and followed by, uh, so five, uh, so, uh, four, uh, yeah, four uh, local varieties. So when i uh, you know uh, took the two year consecutive data and uh, i got the result that the resistant so local variety that is iranagere was showed very less uh, 
infestation by this lucinoda savanalis compared to other varieties like that is about, uh, about 20 uh, 23% and uh, the you know some of the weather parameters like you know maximum temperature wind and uh, morning hum relative humidity and minimum temperature shown negative uh, signal, you know effect on the uh, infestation and followed by like in you know, a population distribution when i studied like there was a bimodal distribution sorry bimodal distribution of the population was observed like so the, at the at the verge of uh, rabi season the population was decreased but uh, at the end of karif the population was uh, increased so it was an indication that like you know uh, the you know summer population sorry uh, the summer population will act as an inoculum for the uh, their infestation like that so this uh, so here is a you know pictorial representation what we can see here so that is a bimodal uh, representation and for, followed by that next object was like you know identification of the resistant population across the india so the population like you know which i collected was uh, bhubaneswar dhampuri pune raichur and uh, varanasi so uh, this was studied again as the different group of uh, insecticide like from uh, op as well as carbonate carbamate uh, neonicotinoid and uh, uh, like a new new molecule like uh, flubendiamide and chlorantinil prol so the study was uh, showed like you know the population uh, was showing so much of uh, resistant towards uh, the frequently used insecticide for example here the frequently uh, used one such insecticide was like in you know, a phenolarate and even uh, flubendiamide the ratio was like in you know, a 20 29.5 uh, to 303 uh, fold resistant against the flubendiamide so this was like you know uh, in an initial uh, uh, instinct that we can uh, they, there will be chances for uh, further study related to the expression so the, then uh, uh, the next objective what i was took like you know identification of their en enzyme production within the population because i have collected the population from the different locations so uh, how the you uh, know production of the enzymes so that enzyme whether really involved in uh, detoxification of the insecticide so when i went for the uh, you know, studying that uh, you know enzymes uh, interactions with the uh, you know, detoxifications so i have identified like you know are you know uh, oh, demethylase of cytochrome uh, p40 monooxygenase it was like you know high over produced in the population which i collected from the field then compared to the isofemal lines which we are uh, you, know, uh, you know maintaining in the uh, icr nbr and same was uh, even observed for the carboxylesterases as well as uh, glutathione transferases so here is the like uh, the you know uh, different uh, of, uh, you know fold uh, changes was observed like you know higher uh, concentration of the uh, this um, you know enzymes uh, in the field population this, uh, then compared to the uh, like you know isofemales like and even carboxylesterases is quite tough to identify based on their production uh, sorry production in the system so i went with uh, like you know uh, vertical gel analysis where i found like you know two more extra uh, low molecular high molecular weight uh, bands so which indicate that in field population the carboxylesterases was more than compared to the uh, like uh, isofemal line what we have uh, uh, isofemal line and uh, the slide is normal so actually this was given an uh, idea that like there are genes like you know enzyme enzyme control governing genes which are involved in uh, this uh, which may be involved in insecticide resistance so by keeping all this uh, basic informations so and uh, even the data of uh, set up uh, sorry uh, lucinoda subanalysis so we went for uh, i went for like you know identification of the genes particularly that next aspect was like identification of the different genes which are uh, uh, present in the uh, lucinoda subanalysis from the uh, whole genome draft so here before uh, entering into the actual uh, genes identification so there is a need of standardization for the standardization like you know uh, there is a need of like you know, um, uh, housekeeping genes so i have uh, selected around nine housekeeping genes from the different uh, uh, functional aspects so in that like you know 28 sr3 as well as gapds are one imp uh, two important genes i will explain in the uh, next objectives and uh, regarding like uh, uh, like identification of the cytochrome p50 and uh, glutathione transferases as well as carboxylesterases so there was like because of the huge uh, you know sequences like you know we have to identify so we found i mean so we followed the series of uh, procedures and we found that like uh, for cytochrome p50 uh, around 74 genes put it two genes were identified uh, from the uh, lucinoda subanalysis which are grouped into four clans which are very important among the four clans like the clans like uh, the genes which belongs to clan 3 and clan 4 are like you know importantly involved in insecticide resistance and here like you know the genes like uh, these two these first uh, genes were highly expressed in uh, uh, lucinoda subanalysis field uh, you know field collected population that i will explain in the 
future object and followed by like you know glutathione s transferases the same method was followed and here also like there were uh, you know we identified the 96 uh, 94 genes of uh, glutathione sorry uh, carboxylases from the uh, lucinda sava analysis which we uh, grouped under uh, different uh, subgroups and followed by uh, glutathione s transferases here uh, the group was like you know uh, sorry the, the you know putative genes were grouped into six and uh, so in this uh, 34 genes like we have uh, means i particular identified 24 were like having a insecticide resistant property like you know uh, for, uh, during this uh, study only i have identified which are all the genes which are involved in insecticide resistant based on the blast x uh, NCBI database where the 90 percent uh, you know query coverage and homology so by using that uh, by using that uh, like i identified Particularly, uh, the finding says that there were like you know 10, uh, 74 uh, cytochrome P450 genes in uh, present in uh, Lucinda Savanalis and uh, uh, sorry 25 in, uh, sorry uh, like 34 uh, glutathione transferases as well as 94 um, um, uh, carboxyl esterases. Among them, 34 uh, resistant from the SIP genes and uh, uh, 16 from the carboxyl esterases and uh, like uh, 24 from uh, glutathione transferases. So further that next study was like an you know, expression study. Like uh, so whatever the genes we have studied and even based on the database uh, database as well as homology. So we have, I mean, I have found that there are some genes which are having insecticide, you know, uh, resistant nature or like, you know, detoxification nature. So uh, further I went for the expression study of them. So, uh, so here, like, you know, first uh, I went, like I call out the genes and I prepared the uh, primer for them by using primer uh, uh, three plus software. So here uh, around uh, for particularly uh, cytochrome P50, uh, uh, so sorry, before, before like uh, we're going for that cytochrome P50, normalization was done for uh, housekeeping genes, particularly here two genes I told like uh, 28 uh, SR3 as well as JPDH, they, uh, they were stably expressed in all the stages as well as the different conditions. So the, the, those things we took as a uh, housekeeping genes for the standardization, the further expression study. And like, uh, uh, so these are the two important genes. Uh, and the further like uh, expression study for cytochrome P50, I told you already that. So the uh, so 34 genes was uh, identified and their expression study was conducted. Here in uh, from the all the five uh, field collected population across the India, the four genes were stably expressed in all the resistant population over the isofemal line we, where, which we maintained in ICR or NBR. So uh, th those genes, like you know, even uh, that heat map also was studied, and these genes were like typically uh, uh, commonly expressed in all the populations, and particularly these two genes, uh, CYP324, F1, as well as CYP306A1, are quite important because this uh, CYP306A1, like you know, one such kind of a genes which we, which I identify first time uh, from the uh, animal kingdom. And uh, like, you know, for, uh, particularly uh, the finding says that these genes are having highest uh, production, like in you know, highest transcript in the resistant population, sorry, field collected population then compared to the uh, isofemal in what we have maintained in ICR NBR. The followed by the same way, like uh, even uh, for, uh, you know, glutathione S transferases, uh, which I conducted in the 24 genome, uh, sorry, 24 uh, genes I have selected for the preparation of uh, what's called uh, primers and further their expression study was conducted. And the expression study implies that, uh, like, uh, uh, the expression study implies that there were, uh, yeah, there were like, you know, uh, uh, two genes which are stably expressed in case of uh, uh, glutathione S transferases. And further, uh, they, uh, it's like, uh, particularly, sorry, uh, glutathione S transferases, this was six genes. Because the glutathione S transferases, uh, that uh, problem is like, duplication problem will be there. The expression study and further analysis will be very tough. Hence, uh, this, uh, you know, six genes, whatever we have studied and which, uh, which uh, I just documented it. And further, like, you know, I went for uh, carboxyl esterases. In this carboxyl esterases, total 94 genes were there. And among those 94 genes, only 16 genes were uh, matching with the uh, insecticide resistant from the different populations. So those 16 genes, why? Because the among the 94 genes, more major genes are involved in behavioral aspect rather than this metabolic, uh, you know, uh, involvement, metabolic functions. So here, like, uh, the uh, you know the study uh, you know uh, the result implies that only two genes which uh, they uh, shown uh, stable expression across the, all the field population but they were not so prominent compared to the cytochrome p50 and glutathione S transferases so those genes were like you know contact uh, con uh, two contacts and followed by that next method was like you know what i followed was uh, like uh, knockdown of the genes 
Uh, particularly here, that final aspect, what I took was two genes. I told you, like, you know, 306 A1 and uh, three. Uh, uh, like uh, 324 F1, these genes were uh, I selected for the further knockdown study. So where I prepared the DSRNA uh, of these and I uh, used the further method like, you know, feeding, you know, the flower bud feeding method. So here the, the flower bud feeding method, when I injected to the, the pump population, which is showed more, you know, resistant from the uh, field, like, you know, for example, Dharmapuri population showed highest resistant uh, in the field condition based on uh, my previous study. So that population I used and one, uh, uh, susceptible population, uh, sorry, that Bangalore population I took, uh, NBR population, as well as uh, now one positive control and negative control I studied. And uh, the study implies, like, you know, I have provided uh, different, uh, you know, concentration of the DSRNA from 1, 0 0.5, 0 0.05, 0 0.05, uh, 0 0.25, and 0 0.05, like that. And uh, the study implies that, uh, uh, the you know, there was like, uh, Highest down regulation was uh, seen in case of highest concentration. For example, here uh, the one uh, one microliter uh, concentration, the gene expression was very less. The same thing was even studied for the other gene also, uh, for the 306A1 also. And even the when I studied like you know mortality, uh, so there was like you know 20 to 30 percent mortality was absorbed because uh, it is not so prominent, but uh, the, there was a mortality because of these particular genes because these genes are involved in detoxification. Please and, summarize here. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. that's all, sir. Completed. Yeah. So it is in uh, the final thing was like, uh, uh, like uh, the uh, study implies that there are genes which are involved in insecticide resistance. Like you know, there are group of enzymes and which are governed by genes. So the important aspect is like you know, they are they are uh, you know uh, they will govern the uh, insect activities and detoxify the insecticide which uh, we apply regularly. So the the best outcome from is like uh, some some of the genes which already there. And uh, that was already uh, validated by using the DSRNA and which can be used for the future uh, de development of the novel molecules. And the study uh, come up with some uh, good outcomes. For example, the uh, you know publications from the frontiers in physiology and biotechnology and applied biochemistry and uh, biology. So these are like you know uh, some important uh, publications which uh, came up came through my PhD thesis. And I sincere thanks to two institute which uh, you know, uh, continuously supported me during my PhD course. That is US Raichur as well as ICR NBR. And I uh, I thank uh, my wholeheartedly uh, my uh, supervisor, uh, Dr. A. Prabhupada sir and uh, Dr. M. Mohan sir. And thank you, uh, you know, ESI for uh, considering me for this award. Thank you. Nice presentation, Dr. Karyana. Very important uh, topic. Yes, sir. And uh, you collected this population from Dharmapuri. Yes, sir. Where uh, highly intensive cultivation of vegetables, especially brinjal, takes place. Yes, sir. Almost precision vegetable cultivation is practiced there and input use is very high. Yes, Ultimately, your uh, results will, your solution that you are going to provide DSRNA or whatever technology will be useful for them. Yes, Thank sir. you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Now we are through with the presentations. Uh, she will make the Congratulations to all the ESI awardees. Now I would like to invite Dr. YG Prashad to present the award for today's awardees. I, I invite Dr. Selva Razan from NBIR to receive the awards on behalf of Dr. Ankita Gupta, Madam. Yes,